Hi, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this fan shape pattern using the warp tool in Adobe Photoshop. To start off with, let's go ahead and create a new file. I'm going to select a new file, and this time I'm going to use the dimensions of 2400 pixels by 2400 pixels. Resolution set to 300 pixels per inch. I'm going to turn off artboards here. Color mode is RGB color. Background content set to transparent and then click create. From here, I'm going to create some lines. So I'm just going to hit D to get my default color to uh, black for my foreground. And then I'm going to hit M for the marquee tool. I'm just going to go ahead and draw out a small skinny rectangle here. And then I'm going to fill it with the foreground color. To do that, I'm going to hit Option Delete for Mac, which is Alt Backspace for PC. And then just Command or Control D to deselect there. Accessing the Move tool V on the keyboard. I'm going to create a, a series of lines here and I'm going to use the step and repeat function in Photoshop. So to do that, I have my object selected. I'm going to select Option Command T. I'm going to uh, go ahead and drag it to the side here and then I'm going to hit OK. And then to get it to continue to repeat, I'm going to go Shift Option Command T. That would be Shift Alt Control T for PC. So we'll go ahead and hit those keys and then it will duplicate it. And then all you have to do is hold those keys down and then just keep hitting T until you get a series of uh, lines here. In this case, I didn't count how many lines, um, but you can do however many you'd like for this. And then I'm just going to um, hit shift click to select all these layers. I'm going to right click and then I'm going to just merge layers into one layer here. From here, we are going to go to edit, transform, and then I'm going to select warp. Under the warp setting here, we see custom. I'm going to hit the drop down and then I'm going to select squeeze. You can see it creates this kind of curvature of those lines. Here under the bend percentage, I'm going to bring this up. Let's go ahead and try 100% bend to get a more extreme curve there. And then I'm going to go ahead and select OK here. Bringing uh, down this object so I can see it, I'm going to just add a guideline here to the center. Using the marquee tool, M on the keyboard, I'm just going to go ahead and draw out a rectangle until I hit that center point. And then I'm going to hit the key Command J or Control J for PC. And then that is just going to create a layer with that selected part so we can turn off that layer. Um, at this point, we can go ahead and delete it. So we have our layer. And then let's go ahead and get rid of that guideline view, clear guides. Using the move tool V on the keyboard, I'm just gonna bring this down here a little bit. From here, I'm gonna access the magic wand tool. I'm gonna select this first side here and then I'm gonna hit Command or Control J and it's gonna put it on a new layer. We'll do that again for this next layer, Command or Control J, and then we'll continue until we get each of these on their own layer. And we only have to do it for one side of them, Command or Control J here. We'll continue selecting our original layer here, Command or Control J. We'll continue to do that, Command or Control J. Selecting our original layer and then we'll select this middle one, Command or Control J, and then we can just turn off our original here. Uh, we see with this one, this is our center one. I'm going to leave that one alone for now. I'm going to select the layer above it and then I'm going to go shift click. Accessing, make sure we're on the move tool V here. I'm going to align the left edges here. I'm going to go ahead and right click. And then I'm just going to uh, merge these layers here. I'm going to make a duplicate of this, Command or Control J. And then we are going to flip it. So we're going to go to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontally. Uh, with this layer, I'm just going to move it to this side here. Selecting our original in that center, I'm going to go ahead and now align those edges there. 
And then I'm going to uh, select this left part and then I'm going to select command or control click that center line and then I'm going to align their right edges and then we have our shape here. Uh, with those layers I'm going to go ahead and just combine them so right click we are going to merge layers here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer here and and then accessing the ellipse shape tool, I'm going to go shift U. You can also right click until you get to the ellipse tool. And then just clicking on the canvas, I'm going to make it a width of 600 pixels with a height of 1200 pixels. Clicking OK there. Accessing the move tool V. I'm going to uh, position it uh, behind this object using the uh, arrow keys. Just position it to where I want it. I'm going to command or control click on the thumbnail here in the layers panel. Selecting our other object, I'm going to hit command or control J. We can uh, delete this lower level and it has been uh, trimmed to the shape of our ellipse. I'm going to make a duplicate of this ellipse, command or control J. Uh, with this one, accessing the shape tool here, I'm going to uh, turn off my fill layer. Uh, with my stroke layer, I'm going to uh, make it black. Uh, that way it gives a outline to our shape here. And then with these three layers, I'm going to go ahead and right click to convert to smart object. Accessing the move tool V here, I'm going to uh, draw down a grid line to the center there. And then I'm also going to add some grid lines to the outside of the shape here. And that just helps with positioning my objects. Uh, with this layer, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. Command or Control J. We'll move it to the side here using those grid lines. And then we'll do that one more time. Command or Control J. We'll move it to the side here. And so now we have a three in the row there. I'm going to uh, shift click here in the layers panel to select all of them. Command or Control J. And then I'm just going to bring it down here and then position it to the side to where it lines up with those grid lines. Uh, accessing our original three, shift click here. I'm going to, to duplicate that. Command or Control J. We are going to uh, bring it up here and then move it to the side. And then here in the layers panel, I'm going to bring it below so it is underneath. Unselecting those objects there, accessing our marquee tool, I'm on the keyboard. Using that grid line, I'm just going to draw out a selection here. And then I'm going to define this as a pattern, edit, define pattern here. And give it a name and then just click on OK. Accessing my patterns panel here, if you do not see yours, you're going to go to window selecting patterns. We are now going to test out this pattern in a new document. So let's go file new. This time I'm going to use the dimensions of digital scrapbook paper, which is 3600 pixels by 3600 pixels. I'm going to leave everything else the same and then just click on create. Uh, for this, I'm going to use one of my actions here. It's called Pattern Test. It is a part of my uh, pattern design action pack for Photoshop. Basically, it creates a color fill layer with a clipping mask to a pattern fill layer, and then we have a background color fill layer here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the, this top color layer, accessing my pattern layer, and then we are going to select our most recent pattern here, and we can see the design there. I'm going to hover over this swatch here and it shows me it is 620 pixels by 1220 pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new document with that dimension. We're going to go 620 by 1220 here and then just click on create. We're going to select a new pattern fill layer selecting OK and then just selecting our newly created pattern. I'm going to go ahead and rasterize this layer. Uh, with the magic wand tool here, I'm going to select the black area and then I'm going to hit command or control J and that's going to bring that to a new layer. Uh, with our original layer turned off, I'm going to define this pattern and I'm going to hit uh, one of my actions to find a pattern and we're going to define our new pattern here. 
Selecting back over into our digital paper document, I'm going to select that pattern, turning on the color fill layer here again, and then I'm going to select uh, some new colors here. So uh, using some uh, predefined swatches here, uh, let's try one of these green colors. And so we have our pattern here and we could always uh, change the order if we want to try a lighter versus darker here. Um, I definitely liked it the reverse. Uh, looking at this pattern here uh, using this technique, you could always change, uh, go back and retry the pattern. So in this case, I probably would maybe less repeats and maybe space them a little bit further apart. So so we can get a little bit more space in between the elements. Uh, but this is kind of a fun technique uh, to try um, in creating different shapes. And you can play, um, in this case, I used an oval. You could always do more of a circular shape. I just thought this was a, a fun technique to try. Um, and I just wanted to show you uh, this tutorial here. Thank you for watching this video on how to create this fun repeating uh, kind of fan shape pattern in Photoshop using the warp tool. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Thank you for watching this video. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.